Today's video is inspired by another channel. The channel this is inspired by is Discus North. If any of my members can please go subscribe to this channel, I'd really appreciate it and maybe leave a comment. One thing I like about his channel is he's very upfront and honest. He doesn't fluff anything. He's constantly trying to get better as a fish keeper. Now I don't want to say I'm just like this amazing fish keeper because he had a video out today about failure. And I think it's one of the most important things in fish keeping is to fail. If you really want to be successful in doing this, even for a living or just for fun, you have to learn to fail and accept that failure. And then learn from that failure. Yes, I breathe a lot of discus. There was about three or four years where I was not successful. I got intermittent success here and there, but it wasn't consistent. And there was really no one teaching as far as how to be successful in breeding discus. They are a high-end fish. These guys, I think it, they're probably about the 9-10 days right now, but they're eating baby brine shrimp. And so to be successful in fish keeping, it's about failing. And one thing that I had to learn on my own, because there was nobody teaching this at the time, was the narrative is that discus need to be in acidic water. Now, if you really think about it, and I had to go and really study the wild. That's how I came up with my concept on beating discus. And if this can help one fish keeper, that is all I can ask for. When the dry season hits, the water drops and it drops into tight pools. And there's certain fish that actually learn to breathe oxygen because these pools are so, so tight, so small and lack oxygen that they have adapted to actually breathe air. Now discus, here's how discus spawn. Someone mentioned that maybe his pH was too low. So we almost have to think opposite when we're breeding discus. Okay. Dry season, very acidic, very, very warm, very hot. You know, these pools get condensed. Fish are surviving, they're barely making it, right? They just want to get to the next season. And then what happens is you have the snowfall in the Andes and that runs off into the Amazon. That water is cool. Not only does it lower the temperature, so maybe if the pools are at 90, 95, 100, that's why these discus can live in that warm water is because their DNA is adapted to hot water. I mean, that's bath water. But when this runoff comes up, the water cools down and you got literally melting snow going in. It's not 60 degree water. It's mingling with, as it's filling up these pools, it's basically becoming, you know, more turbulent and the temperature is lowering so if it was 85 90 it might be 70 75 right and also what's happening is you got to realize that that snow is melting off of the andes and picking up calcium so the ph is rising i would say the disc is probably spawn in anywhere between six eight to seven two maybe even higher you know the only test i've ever read was the average pH of the Amazon is about seven. That's during the rainy season, during the snow melt. That's where I kind of came up with my theory of the glacier method and raising the pH. Now, if you want discus to spawn, the best thing you can do is put them in a low pH. And I'm not saying, you know, five, five, because at five, five pH, the males melt is basically ineffective it is not it, it goes dormant it will not fertilize an egg at 5 5 ph but you could probably keep a discus you know six and then raise that ph to a seven in with a little bit cooler water now we gotta remember we're keeping tighter smaller tanks we don't want to put 50 degree water in 85 degree and mix it right but a 50 percent water change with cooler water soft water now it has to be soft because it is the osmotic pressure that's what basically lets those eggs accept the milk and fertilize you could put soft pure ro water in a tank and they will be fine for a couple days and that the thing with pure ro water is it's usually about a neutral anyways but what happens is as the fish go to the bathroom in the water, they tend to lower that pH just by going to the bathroom in the water. So that tends to make the pH 
pH a little more acidic. Raising the pH is the secret to breeding discus, not lowering the pH. So it's the opposite. And it took me years to figure this out. And there was no, there was really no books on it. I had to go read born journals and scientists, how they read the Amazon, what was going on there. And the day I learned about this was an aha moment. Discus can spawn and breed and hatch eggs in neutral water. They can. Now, I've had freak accidents twice that they've gone into my tap water, which is anywhere from a 7.6 to an 8.3. But you have to remember the same thing can happen over time because when I'm not testing my water all the time, the fish could have been sitting in that water for, you know, two weeks and the pH could have dropped naturally just by them living in that tank. As you put in food, as they go to the bathroom, pH will drop. That's just a fact. Now, a good way to raise pH is to aerate. The more aeration and breaking that surface of water tends to raise pH. So, if you want a lower pH, less air. If you want to raise pH, more air. Now, these are all theories of mine. And that's my point on this video by watching his video. And here's the thing with Discus North is I learn a lot from him because what it does is it humbles me and brings me back to the start. It brings me back where I started in this hobby. Now I'm not saying he's not advanced because I believe he is advanced. And one reason I say that is because he keeps discus different than most people. And I appreciate that. When I see his tanks, I go, dang, those things look good. And he's kind of breaking all the rules. And to me, those rules are meant to be broken. Because when I look at his tank, I see healthy fish. And yes, I keep bare bottoms. That's my choice because I got multiple tanks, 20 tanks, and I want to have easy access. I want to make sure that I am constantly getting in these tanks and changing water. Because I don't rely on my filtration. If you notice all my tanks, they just have a sponge filter usually in them. And that's the thing that I prefer. So to say there's a wrong way and a right way to keep fish is ridiculous because you got to realize this hobby's been around for what almost a hundred years and where it's going to go in another hundred years. It's going to take innovators like Discus North that come up with his own theories and is not afraid to go against the grain. To me, I appreciate that. That's something that I really admire because that's how I became successful in what I do. Now, right now in my room, I have three spawns. I have this spawn here in this tank. Right next door, I have a spawn and it looks like the eggs are viable and they're gonna be good. Genetics is a whole new ball game that I'm trying to go down this river right now and it's not easy because it takes a lot to try to figure out who's right and who's wrong. The thing is, is I will fail miserably. I will fail and I will learn and I will move forward. And that's the point of this video. So please, if you watch this video, please go give Discus North a subscribe. It's free, you guys. Help him out. The guy puts out daily videos and I watch them all because they pop up on my feed because it's really the only other person I watch in the hobby. I watch a little bit of, what's the guy in Britain that does the planet tanks and stuff? I watch him every now and then. I don't know his name. But the reason why is because it's something so different from what I do. And I know it's very edited and it's very polished and I get that. But you know what? He's earned that and he's, he's got a lot of subscribers. I just wanted to make this video and give a shout out to Discus North because this morning I woke up not feeling well. I was not going to make a video and then I seen his failure video and it just brought me back to the beginning now I'm not saying that he's just starting because he's more advanced than most fish keepers on the web there's a lot of people putting stuff out and they're just showing you the good stuff you know that's my theory too I try to show you everything now I don't have the failure like I used to but I still have failure right now I'm working with a fish that this is a discus problem and it usually starts with a gill issue. I believe it's bacteria, but I've come up with some medications that I'm pretty excited about. But I'm not going to release that video right away because I've only done one test on it. And yes, it's working. I need to know if this medication destroys the biological filtration. I need to know if there's any long-term effects on this fish. I need to know, you know, how long do I need to do this medication because it's nothing that's really in the hobby right now at all but also the dosages. 
So I probably got another six months to a year and I'll fail miserably. If something goes wrong, don't stress about it. Figure out what it is, what you can do to solve it, how you can get better and move forward and just become better at whatever you do. It doesn't just, this doesn't just apply to fish keeping. This is everything, right? You know, I just want him to have the credit that is due because yes, is it highly polished videos? Personally, I think it is because I think it's coming off the cuff and it's real. So to me, it's the kind of videos I like. But the production value compared to other channels that have millions of subscribers, maybe not. You know, we're all not trying to get the silver plate. That's not why I do this. I've been doing this for four years. I have barely 3,000 subscribers. Now, I should have a lot more, but that's not why I do this. I do this when I see something good in the hobby, I wanna come out and say, this is awesome. So please, mem if you're a member of my channel, you better go to his channel, give a subscribe, and give a comment, Scheller. Just put Scheller in the comments or anything you wanna write. But that way, we're supporting people that really make a difference in the hobby. Now you might not agree with everything he says, and you might not agree with everything I say, and that is fine, that's perfect. But once we start having the conversations, that's where we move forward in this hobby. Remember, the next 100 years, we're a part of this now to make that next 100 years something special. Yeah, we won't be here, but maybe something we come up watching these channels and learning is gonna make a difference in the future. All right guys, that's it. I appreciate everyone, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care, bye.